Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nak. Today we're going to talk about graphs of exponential functions. We pretty much covered everything about how to graph the exponential functions, but here is our goal for this section. Our goal is to graph exponential functions using transformations. Let's review a little bit. So recall that this is the graph of f of x equals b to the x if b is strictly greater than 1. Now notice the key points. Key points, remember the exponential functions always have to go through 0 comma 1 and then 1 comma b, where b is the base of the function. Now here is the graph of f of x equals b to the x, where b is between 0 and 1. Again, key points are 0 comma 1 always, and then this value here is going to be 1 comma b, where b is the base. Now, here, since b is between 0 and 1, your value of b is going to be a fraction, like maybe 1 half, uh, 1 third, 2 thirds, and whatnot, but it has to be less than 1. Now let's analyze an exponential function of the form f of x equals b to the x plus c plus d. Now other mother function or the parent function is f of x equals b to the x. Now let's go over what does c and then d is going to affect our mother function f of x equals b to the x. First, d denotes the vertical shift units and then this little tiny c is the horizontal shift units and then uh, we're going to have the y-intercept at 0 comma b to the c so base to the horizontal units and then plus d which is the vertical units all right and then y equals to d is going to be the horizontal asymptote and range is always going to be d comma infinity and domain is going to be all real numbers Let's take a look at example one, graph f of x equals 2 to the x plus 1 minus 3. Find the domain, range, and asymptote. All right, so here is the summary of what we just discussed. So let's first determine who plays the role of d, which is the vertical shift, c, horizontal shift, and then from there we can find the y-intercept and horizontal asymptote and find the domain and the range. So let me first rewrite our function here. So f of x equals 2 to the x plus 1 and then minus 3. Now we're analyzing the functions of the form f of x equals to b to the x plus c and then plus d. All right, so with that said, our b is going to be 2 and then our c is going to be 1. And then be careful here, your d is going to be negative 3. Let's first uh, find our horizontal asymptote. Now, the formula is y equals to d. So just follow the formula. So this implies that our horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals to negative 3. Now let's deal with the horizontal shift and the vertical shift. Now, if c equals to 1, Remember, C is the horizontal shift units, right? So that means that you're going to have to shift our mother graph, which is f of x, b to the x, left one unit. So be careful. It's going to be left if C is positive, and it's going to be right if C is negative. Next, D equals to negative 3 means that you're going to have to shift f of x equals b to the x three units downward. Now, here's the cool thing. Let's just analyze what we just wrote for c and a d. c means shift the function one unit to the left. So that means what then? Your x value gets shift one unit to the left. So that indicates your x value is going to be at negative c, which is going to be negative 1. And then you're going to have to shift uh, f of x three units downward. So downward means you're talking about the y value, right? So your y value is going to be shifting three units downward, which means that your y value is going to be negative three. So we can summarize the total shift as negative c and then comma d. And which in this case, we're going to have negative one comma negative three. 
Keeping all that in mind, let's try to graph this out. Let's first draw the mother graph, which is f of x equals 2 to the x. Now remember, it's always going to go, th exponential function is always going to go through 0 comma 1, and this portion is going to be 1 comma b. Now our b is 2, so our graph must pass through these two points. After you draw the mother graph, all you have to do is look at the total shift. Total shift is x is negative 1 and then y is negative 3. So basically what this is telling you is that our key point, which is 0 comma 1, move one unit to the left and then go three units downward and then make yourself a dot. So if I do that, okay, left one unit, that will be here, and then go three units downward, which is one, two, three. So this is the point that I need to jot down. Now the coordinate for that point is negative one comma negative two. Now we're gonna do the same thing for this ordered pair one comma two. So you take this point, move one unit to the left, and then move three units downward. So I'm gonna be plotting zero comma negative one. And now all you have to do is, oh wait, we forgot the horizontal asymptote, sorry about that. Horizontal asymptote is at y equals to negative 3. So here is the line y equals to negative 3. All right, so now let's connect those two dots and draw our final graph. So it must look something like, oh no, something like this. Yeah, mm, that looks good enough to me. So there it is. So this is our graph of f of x equals 2 to the x plus 1 and then minus 3. All right, so now let's take a look at f of x equals a times b to the x plus c and then plus d. And of course, our mother function is y equals b to the x. Now, sometimes mother function is called a parent function, uh, but anyways, you can call it father function if you wanted to, but you can call it whatever, basic function, whatever floats your boat. Now, C and a D are exactly the same thing as the previous examples that we did, where C represents the horizontal shift and then D uh, implies the vertical shift. Now let's talk about A. So here are the properties of A. In fact, you're gonna have to analyze absolute value of A. Now, if absolute value of A is strictly greater than zero, what we're going to do is we're going to stretch our graph vertically by a factor of absolute value of a. Now, if absolute value of a is between 0 and 1, then what we're going to do is take our graph and compress vertically by a factor of absolute value of a. And then, like I said, c implies the horizontal shift and then d implies the vertical shift. And together, we can express our total shift as negative c comma d. Now, we've also learned this in the previous sections, but if a is negative, if a, this value a is negative, what you need to do is you need to reflect the graph about the x-axis, if x is negative. But anyways, let's do an example. Example two, let's try to graph f of x equals negative one-half times one-fourth to the x minus two, and then plus four. We got this. It's always helpful to graph an exponential function if you know where the horizontal asymptote is. So let's first find the horizontal asymptote. Recall that the horizontal asymptote formula is y equals to d. So that implies that our y equals to 4 is going to be our horizontal asymptote. All right, so let me box that. Now, before I do this, let me label uh, which one's going to play the role of A and then B, C, and a D. All right, sorry, maybe I should have done that first. So here, what we got going on is this. Our, let me change the color. Our A is negative 1 half. And then our B is 1 fourth. And then our C is negative 2. And then our D is positive 4. And please note that our mother graph, let me just write it right here. 
mother graph is nothing but f of x equals to one fourth to the x power. So here's the graph of the mother function. Now let's see what we're going to do next. Let's try to graph y equals one fourth to the x minus two. So now we have the horizontal shift factor going on. So this means that you're going to have to take our key points and shift two units to the right. So the key points are here. You're going to have zero comma one and one comma b. So that will be right here. So this, this point right here is going to be one comma and then one fourth which means that our key point 0 comma 1 has to go to 2 comma 1 and then 1 comma 1 fourth has to go to 3 comma 1 fourth. So this will be the rough sketch. So here's the graph so far. Next step, what we want to do is let's uh, graph y equals to 1 half and then 1 fourth to the x minus 2. So this means that we're going to have to take our previous graph, which is the blue graph, and compress that by a factor of one half, which means that two comma one, which is this point, has to go to two comma one half. It's going to change the y value. Now, and three comma one fourth is going to have to go to three comma half of one fourth, which is going to be one over eight. So here is the graph. I'm talking about the orange graph. So this point, I don't know if you can see this, I'm sorry. So this point now is two comma one half. And then this little point right here is going to be three comma one over eight. All right, so now finally, let's graph what we want, which is y equals negative one half times one fourth to the x minus two. So now what do we got going on? What we have is the reflection about the x-axis. So what we need to do is we need to reflect our orange graph about the x-axis, which means that our point 2 comma 1 half, which is this guy right here, has to go to negative 2 comma negative 1 half, and then 3 comma 1 over 8, which is this point right here, has to go to negative 3 comma negative 1 over 8. So this will be the rough sketch. And here's the actual graph by um, using Desmos. But anyways, what we did was we basically took our basic function or parent function or mother function, which is y equals two, one fourth to the x power. And then we transformed that once. Oops, sorry, this is the first one. And this is the second one. And here is our final graph. All right, so I'm going to stop here. So if you have any questions at all, please let me know. Good job, everyone.